Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Truly Bedrock with me, Mr Beardstone. We're here today at our village and we will be eventually doing some work on this. But first we do have a few other things we need to do. And I'm holding rockets but I'm not wearing my elytra so I'm going to quickly solve that situation before I do my usual thing and just jump to my death. So it's about 24 hours since we opened our slime shop and I've spent a lot of that time AFK at the farm here. And by a lot of that time I mean probably a couple of hours. I, I, I haven't left the computer on all night that's just that's just crazy however we have resulted in having a lot more slime so I, I think I might actually 24 hours after opening the shop actually be able to go in there and you know change the prices around a little bit just make it a bit easier for people to actually take the slime because you know blocks are easier to transport than slime balls now let's be real so uh, yeah we're gonna see what we can do about that situation Ah, and there she is. So I've still got a bit of detailing to do on this building. I do want to put a few more lights on it so that at night it does actually glow a bit more as opposed to just the doorway glowing. And I have had suggestions as well because I was umming and ahhing about whether to add more granite into the side walls and um, it seems to be a resounding yes, so I'll be getting to that at some point as well. And maybe in this episode I'll get the pipes on the back. I've got an idea of a layout for that now, how we're going to have the slime pouring into the ocean and I think that will just look quite cool, if not maybe a little bit toxic and poisony but ah, it's fine it's fine so I've actually got uh, almost two full shulkers of blocks here and obviously these are all full of balls as well so what we need to ooh, okay that's cool we've actually sold some nice I like that uh, so what we're gonna need to do is turn all these back into blocks um, and figure out what we're gonna do I think what I'll probably end up doing is about half a stack of blocks for a diamond which I know is gonna make them ever so slightly more expensive than they have been overnight but they're going to be a lot easier to transport and it's only a difference of a few slime balls so I'm sure it'll be fine and that should allow us to actually fill up this display quite a lot as well. I'm just going to crack on and make these slime blocks and I will meet you back here once I've got all this done. We've managed to fill up the top five of these barrels and we've got a couple of extra ones at the bottom here and we're doing them as one diamond per 32, which means you get four and a half stacks for a diamond instead of five of the actual slime balls. But as I say, it's, it's gonna be a lot easier to manage. I'm sure it'll be fine. And you know, depending how sales go, we may or may not sort of reduce prices further down the line, but I'm, I, you know, it, it kind of depends. There's probably enough slime there for the whole server for the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the season, depending on what people are building. So let's just, uh, let's just move on with our lives now and hopefully we'll make some profit from that at some point. Maybe. I don't even check the other one anymore. The next thing for us to do is to head back to our village and start making plans for what we're actually going to do today. So we're just we're just going to take a nice run down this nether tunnel which is slowly, slowly being constructed. And uh, yeah, it's a huge project and Liara is doing a wonderful job. I think a lot of the server have been pitching in as well for resources and to do some digging. And yeah, I just can't wait to see this when it all comes together. It's going to be awesome! Oh, 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 not so awesome, not so awesome. <laughs> run! Well, the primary focus for today, I think, is going to be starting here with the smithy. We're going to get the smithy in there. We're going to get a couple of those XP furnaces going in here as well, which means we're probably going to need to go buy more raw fish at some point so we can load those up. And then I think we're just going to start working our way around the town. I have absolutely no idea how many buildings we're going to get done, but we're going to try and get, you know, a good, a good two, three at least. And, you know, if we get them all done, then fantastic. But I really don't see that happening, do you? Uh, yeah, we need to, uh, we, we've got lots to do, lots to do. So the first thing is going to be to get some shulker chests together and gather the resources that I'm going to need for this. It's primarily going to be similar materials to what we've used over there, so we're going to need lots of birch, which means we need to do lots of chopping because we don't really have much. We're going to need more dark oak because we don't have much of that either. And we're going to need lots and lots of stone, which strangely enough, we have lots and lots of. I, I wonder if that's anything to do with those four chunks we dug out last episode. The answer is yes. Yes, it's definitely to do with those. It's 100% to do with those. I've gone and grabbed myself lots of resources. I've got plenty of wood. I've chopped down half a birch forest because I have a feeling I'm going to need a fair amount of birch because I want to try and do sort of slightly different textures to what we've got over there. Although on reflection, uh, probably actually not going to use birch on the blacksmiths, am I? It would just set on fire. Oh, that's probably a waste of time. J. 
jam Let's go paint a town red What you say You know that I would But I got bills to pay Take me dancing In your living room Take your shoes off Do 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 Money makes the world go round Money can't buy the love we found Money troubles go away I got bills to pay my Shopping up and down the way Well, I'll buy you anything Cause it's your special day yeah. It don't have to be the latest fashion It don't have to be made of gold I don't need no fancy handbag If I got your hand on Money makes the world go round Money can't buy the love we found Money troubles go away I got bills to pay my baby That took a little bit longer than expected, but I'm quite pleased with the results, and I've actually put a bit of an interior on some of these. I know, I know. I, I, I did some interiors, and they still need a bit more, I'm not going to lie, but I have at least made a start. I'm really loving the view that you get down here now with the bookshop, the blacksmith, and also the farmer's market. I think they're all tied together really nicely, and uh, you may have noticed during the time lapse, but um, yeah, I had, had, had a bit of trouble with the roof of that one, trying to get that top bit there to not look stupid really i wanted to have a bell in it and i wanted to have it slightly raised because you know you're gonna have we're gonna have some livestock in there we're gonna have cows and sheep and whatnot and you know you need the fumes to escape so yeah just trying to get that bit right was was an absolute pain but i'm, I'm very pleased with how it's come out and uh yeah we do still need to get the cows and the sheep in here but we'll, we'll get that sorted out shortly the first part of the time lapse covered this building which is our blacksmith so up here up the stairs there's not too much going on inside there's a bit of a sort of furnace type thing which i'm you know yeah uh and over here we've got some chains and buckets and things i'm gonna put some lava in there if i can i'm not sure if you can put lava in cauldrons but i'm gonna give it a go and then i actually just knocked through this wall which takes us into this building which i've not done anything with the interior on as yet but this is actually where our original furnace was and brings us back out to the only original house of the village that's still here and I think with everything that's gone on around it now that's actually tied in quite nicely and I d to be honest I don't think I'm going to do anything to it I think I'm just going to use it as a relic of the past and just leave it as it is and over here we have our uh, cheaty furnaces which are the XP banks but until they make unbreaking work I'm going to uh, keep using them so it is what it is but yeah I like it I think it's come out well and as I say, yeah, we've got the farmer's market, which we'll have the cattle, and we'll get a couple of villages in here as well to roam around. But what building's next? That's the question. Um, uh, that one. That one over there, so I can go to sleep. I can hear zombies. I'm off. The plan is to keep going and get some more buildings down before we put all the finer details in. I do want to make use of the armor stands and things like that and really sort of, you know, customize these buildings a little bit more to make them look like they belong. And I think... You know, I've, I, I do a lot of time lapses, and I've had quite a lot of requests for tutorials on the builds and things that I do. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of doing tutorials, they take a lot of time, and I do work full time, so I wouldn't really have the time to release other videos if I was, uh, if I was doing tutorials. So, as a compromise, what I figured is that I'm going to build this leather workers here, and I'm just going to sort of talk you through my process, or, well, I, I say process, it's, it's not much of a process. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to talk as I build and I'll, I'll show you the important bits into, you know, a, a condensed edit, I suppose, and see if that works. If that doesn't really work, then I will just play it to you as a time lapse. But maybe just, you know, talk you through my process over the top of the time lapse so you can actually see what's running through my head as I'm building different things. Um, I, I'm sure one of those two things will work. 
So I'm just gonna I'm gonna crack on with the uh, with the leather place now, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. I need to go grab some resources first. So uh, I'm gonna meet you back here in just a minute. And that little pig is so cute. Oh, I want to keep him. Okay, so the first thing I do with any build is usually just to mark out a frame, which I think is, you know, fairly fairly standard. So what I'm going to do is just knock out some of this wool and get down a rough shape of what I want the building to be like. Now I've got a basic frame in place, the next thing I do is uh, just double check the size and shape fit because I quite often like to work with odd numbers because it allows you to do peaked roofs, which in a village like this that we're going for I think is going to work very well. And then I just sort of look at how I think the rest of the building is going to come together really. So I'll try and picture where I want the roofs to be and then I'm just going to start working on the walls and the palette and so on. But I think what I see here is a peaked roof there. So we're probably going to go up a bit higher on this side and then put a peaked roof on. And this one here I think we're just going to slant it into the side so that the top floor of that building still has a window that can actually receive light. And I think that's just going to give a nice cool effect. And then what we'll probably do is actually put the main entrance to the shop here and then have it step up a level into the main area and so on. Okay, so I played around a little bit and I'm not going to lie, I've settled on an old favourite of mine which is the brown mushroom blocks, jungle wood and stripped dark oak. So I think that's going to work quite well with the area and I'm probably going to put a stone trim around the bottom area as well. So if you imagine this one, but only a single layer of stone most likely, but then going into this sort of texture and we'll also mix in some planks as well and you know i think just make it look a little bit a little bit worn really because yeah i think we're probably going to go with making this one the magic shop i think so i'm going to get to work i guess quick and easy we've got the stone floor in which is going to show us that the beams are at the right heights we'll put stairs in there so that'll be nice and easy and that's going to be the upper end of the build over there so the next step is just going to be to block in the walls in the sort of main block of the pallets and most of the time I sort of just block the whole wall in and then knock out some windows and uh, with this one though I kind of only want small little pokey windows you know we want to make this place look a little bit creepy it's going to be quite dark and dingy on the inside but not so dark that mobs are going to spawn up because we definitely don't want that. I've got all the walls blocked out and I've also put the walls on the inside here so that we don't have all of this texture on the inside of the actual shop itself and we'll probably end up replacing some of these with sort of barrels and bookshelves and things anyway but for now it just allows me to sort of picture the actual interior space that we've got a little bit more and it's going to be nice and pokey which for a magic shop I think is ideal because it means we can really sort of cram stuff in there and make it look nice and busy. At this point I did move on to the texturing and a large part of my process is trial and error so so I place a lot of blocks, I remove a lot of blocks, I stand back, I look at it and then I'm like nope I don't like it and then I go back and replace everything again and as you can see on this wall here I was really struggling with the window shapes and where the awning would go and yeah it, it, I was just really struggling. It, it, it wasn't the best but it is all part of the process and it's how you learn. So a few minutes of sort of placing blocks, taking blocks down and placing blocks again, I've come up with something that for now I'm happy with and I think once I start to get the rest of the building together that is going to help me decide whether I actually like that or not but I think once we get the vines and leaves and all the other bits in I think that could work quite nicely but we do of course still have the rest of the walls to texture all around here so I'm going to crack on with that and I'll meet you guys back here in just a moment. All the walls are now textured and the downstairs part of the building is actually starting to look quite good now. You can start to see how it's all coming together together but now I need to work on the next floor up so I'm gonna make a start on that and I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with that yet I'm thinking probably dark oak pillars on these bits maybe going across the top there as well though that might be a bit too much but in regards to the sort of top of the building in regards to what resource I'm going to use um, um sand or more specifically smooth sandstone and 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 birch yep yeah that's what we're gonna do we're gonna use those oh god go pick all that up now on arriving at the top here i have realized there's something else we need to consider and that is how we sort of tile this into the wall at the back here and i think i've got an idea which basically involves a little bit of uh, a little bit of, a little bit of smashy smashy but I think what I'm going to do is just ignore it for now. 
and as I build the roof, I'm hoping I'll be able to pull something together. Yep, that sounds like a plan. So, first things first, I want to put up my corner beams. So, I don't want this floor to be massive, I don't want it to be too big, but I do want it to be sort of set back like this, because then we can make use of these window sills and do some cool stuff with those as well. And I just think that could look quite cool. So that's what we're going to do. So although we've got the indent going most of the way around, it's not going to work everywhere because of the way it sort of goes alongside this wall. So what you need to do in these situations is to adapt. And what I'm going to do to adapt is do what I always do. Make it up as I go along. So if I put these bits in here and get some more in there and there, that gives us a fairly sort of solid wall at the back here that integrates nicely into the wall down here. However, this bit here is the, is the only bit I think that's upsetting me. And I think if I replace that with some more beams like that, that's going to give us the separation we need at the top as well. So if we stand back, especially with the trees in the way, it's just, it's just a part of the wall with the building integrated into it. And I, I didn't have a plan for that. It just works. It's fine. It's fine. And if ever it's not fine, leaves are your friend. Just saying. So the next thing to figure out is where the roof is going to go and how I want the roof to be. So I think I want it to be quite a sort of tall, thin roof to make it, you know, one of the tallest buildings in the town. Because, you know, magic is obviously important here in Minecraft. We do enchant all the things. So the way I'm going to do that, I think, is to go up two levels at a time. Um, I just need to worry about the front here at the moment. So we'll have two there, and then we'll go up four, and then we'll go up six. And then for the middle one, we'll go up seven. Just to make it slightly curved off on the roof there, because why not? Um, if it looks bad, we'll just put another block on. It's fine. I've done a little bit of texturing on the sand front there, but I'm not sold on it at the moment. I think the birch might be too high contrast with the sand, so yeah, not 100% sold at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the roof on, and I'm going to do the same roof style as that. So cyan terracotta with some dark oak, and I think that's going to tie the whole build together. So, you know, the procedure by now, just, just see how it goes. Okay, there we are. So we have the roof on, we have the wall all textured. We still need to maybe get a little bit more in there. Still not 100% sold on the birch. I think it needs something else to break it up. I'm not too sure what that is yet, so we might have to come back to that. But then we also need to get a bit of foliage in there as well, just so it looks less bland. And I'm thinking, you know, sort of bushes, window box type things across the front there could look quite nice. And we also need to get some framing on the windows. The last bit we need to do is, if we go in here, we still have a hole in the roof. I think what I'm going to do for the roof here is the same thing I usually do, which is essentially just slam down some slabs to cover it over, and I'm sure we'll be fine once we've got that done. So let's just put some of these on, and we'll just make sure that the height varies a bit as we go, and do what we normally do, and just mess it up a little bit. So we've done nothing on the interior whatsoever, we've still got a couple of blocks to remove as well. So the interior is vast and empty at the moment, and it's going to be quite a vertical shop it would seem, but that's absolutely fine. Once again, magic shop, supposed to be weird, not a problem. I'm going to grab some bushes, I'm going to sort that out, and the other thing we need to do is to put some texture on the roof. And I'm going to use a combination of grey concrete powder and some grey wool, which to be honest I'm probably going to steal from one of these buildings. But that will break up the roof a bit as well, will make that look less solid as it currently does if I stand off to the side here. There we go, you see what I mean? So I need to break that up a bit as well. And there we have it. Um, Yep, I haven't done the interior, whatever, we know the drill, we know the drill. Uh, I do actually have some good ideas for the interior though, so I am going to be doing that to be for the end of the episode, and I don't, um, I mean, the next cutback might be that. I'm not entirely sure. I kind of haven't really thought past this point. Hmm. I was right. On the cutback, we have actually had an interior done. I say had an interior done, that made it sound like I didn't do it. I, 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 I swear I did, I did actually do it. And whoa, and you'll be able to tell because I'm not that great at interiors. So I've also added a few lights out on the outside to make it look a bit more mystical. So I've used these soul lanterns, which are the new blue ones. And you can see some of what's going on in there through the windows already, which is quite nice. So as we come up to the entrance here, I've just indicated that it's a bit of a weird shop with an ender eye. Not really sold on that, but you know, when am I ever? And in here, we have what we wanted, just a nice cramped sort of magic-y looking bookshop. We've used chains and lanterns, and we've even made use of a lot of the sort of nether type things. I'm going to actually replace that flower with 
a more sort of colourful nethery one. There we go. And I've carried this theme through. I've got a couple of heads in here as well. I've got some of the vines dangling down, which have already grown. I only placed one there, so that was nice and quick. And yeah, I, I, I really like how sort of cramped and um, condensed this whole area looks. And up here, I've also made use of the upstairs. So we've just got sort of lots of bookshelves that stretch all the way up the wall here with an access ladder. And then we have a sort of hanging bed, a few more bits, bits of extra storage. Not too much going up on here, but to be honest, this is probably the last time we'll ever be up here, so I wouldn't say that's a big issue. Unless we need a nap, I suppose. Hmm, always handy to have more beds around. I think the village is really starting to come together now. It's really starting to look quite good. We've got, what, sort of five, six buildings here now? And despite the spawn proofing and the fact that there's no villagers roaming around, just just the general sort of look and feel of this village is, yeah, I'm, I'm really starting to like it. And the, the more buildings we get in, the more rammed the streets get, the better this is going to look. There is one last thing that I do wish to do this episode, and that is something that I did mention at the start, and that involves us going over to the shopping district. And over here, what we need to do is get more granite in these walls. It's a bit easier to see now that it's daylight. I've kind of realised after I published the previous episode that when I was pointing out the walls and all those sort of bits, it was actually dark here. So, yeah, that doesn't come out particularly well on the old YouTube. But, yeah, we did, we did all agree that we needed much more granite in this wall here, make it look a little bit more worn. So I'm just going to quickly get to work on that. There we go, I think that's looking much better now. Just the additional granite and polished granite really breaks up that wall, it looks a lot less bland, and I am overall much happier with how that is looking. Good, 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 good. Right, um, I think, I think we're probably about done. Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. So on that note, I'm going to head back to spawn, purely because I've not actually been there for a little while, and I'd like to see if there's anything new to go and explore. And, uh, well, I, I guess I guess that's it. We've achieved loads this episode. We've built three new buildings. We've got our slime building looking a little bit nicer. And we've made some good progress on that village. So still plenty left to do. And I'm doing that whole third person front view flying thing again. This never seems to work out. Maybe maybe I shouldn't. And here we are arriving at spawn. And yeah, this place is this place is looking pretty pretty built up and busy. All this is new. Killer has been busy. Wow, he's built the whole dock. Okay, yeah, this is this is awesome. I need to have a good look around here and get some tips. He's got some good builds. Nice, 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 nice. And this is where I must leave things for today. This has turned out to be quite a long episode. We tried a slightly different format with one of the builds there as well, where I tried to talk you through my process. Um, yeah, I think I think it came out okay, but I'd be very interested in your thoughts. I mean, do you want to see more of those sorts of things, or should I just stick to what I know and stick to time lapses and, you know, just, just ignore the what it is I'm actually doing kind of thing? I mean... I'd be really interested to know what you guys think, so please do let me know in the comments. And I've just realised I'm going to go over here because no doubt there's probably a creeper or something roaming around knowing my luck, and I don't really want to be blowing up the spawn town. Let's let's go into hiding. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like. It really does help the channel out. And if you are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing as well. I noticed about 40% of you that watch these videos are not currently subscribed, and we are getting very close to the 1,000 subs now. So if you do want to help us out there, please do smash that red button as well. And I will see you all next time on Truly Bedrock. Bye-bye now. Mm, need to torches. Oh my god, no 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 no, oh, what the, oh, oh my, where did you all come from?